Okay, hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Joker. Welcome back to the channel. So, for those of you who you saw yesterday, was it yesterday or the day before? I think it was the day before. But the uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth trailer. I'm just gonna say it now. If you haven't watched it, just go ahead and watch it now. It was crazy. Uh, they also revealed the Crisis Core remake called Crisis Core Reunion. But today we're gonna be more talking about the Seven Remake Part Two or Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and we're gonna kind of like break down the trailer you know try to find like hidden clues and stuff like that see what we can find dissect you know what i'm saying so without any further ado we're gonna hop straight into that real quick though before we start i want y'all to go ahead and hit that like button subscribe to the channel you know help your boy out that's how we you know get our views that's how we get our exposure and all that so yeah i really do appreciate all those of you who are subscribed to the channel now but yeah, I'm not going to waste your time and, like, drag on with this. We're going to, like, go ahead and watch. I'm going to uh, put a disclaimer out here. This is, like, spoilers for those of you who have not watched the trailer. So if you really don't want to be spoiled, just go ahead and watch it. I'm, I'm going to be playing the trailer anyway during this. So we're going to be doing that. I'm going to let you know I'm going to be pausing this a lot, you know, just to, you know, frame by frame. We're going to try to figure out what we can about this trailer. So if y'all want to hop in for a wild ride, let's start it. All right, hold on. Let me hit play. Let me make sure it's not too loud. What we've done... That set gotcha. in stone, the past is forever. But the future, even if it has been written, can be changed. All right, so this part right here, uh, it's definitely Aerith, right? Uh, it's definitely her voice actor. Aerith is saying basically what they've done. have uh, They've basically changed the events. Uh, for those of you who have not played FF7 Remake Part 1, you know, this is going to be a spoiler here. So if you haven't played that, just click off the video. But yeah, what she's explaining here is that... Uh, the Arbiters of Fate, at the end of the game, you know, they defeated them, and now, like, anything can freaking happen. Like, as you can see, for those of you who are up to date with the game, shit's been going on, right? Like, people that were supposed to die have not died. You know, people died that weren't supposed to die, you know, stuff like that. So, it's really crazy, uh, like, looking at the ending, and uh, what she's basically saying here is, like, anything can basically happen. So, I won't really go too much into that, but... So, focus on the future, not the past. Focus on the future, not the past. You see that there? That... Let me go back. Let me go back. The f that was awesome. The that is Meteor. Like, uh, so that scene right there, that's, like, literally the Meteor that's gonna, like, eventually, you know, come into contact with the planet, right? Uh, so in you know Final Fantasy VII Rebirth or Part Two, uh, how far is the game going to get? Like, is like, are they going to get to the point where um, you know like Sephiroth gets black materia, calls forth meteor? You know what I'm saying? That's going to be a good sign. You know, like that'll be crazy too. Like, I gotta see how far the the game goes, but that's that's pretty cool. All right, what will become of the planet? Yep, that's that. Wants to finish what he we started. See, uh, we see Cloud, Sephiroth. All right, this is one crazy thing. So when I first watched this trailer, I saw Cloud and Sephiroth next to each other. And I'm like, wait, why are they all buddy-buddy? Like, what's going on here? So this scene right here, this I, I believe this is... Because uh, remember, uh, the 7 Remake Part 1 ended right after they left Midgard. So, you know, the Cloud and the party, they're on their way to, uh, way to Calm, right? Which is like a neighboring town, you know, like not too far away. Um... But yeah, I, I'd imagine this is like the flashback of what happened like five years ago. I uh, remember when Cloud was given his like uh, flashback of, you know, what happened from his perspective. Uh, I won't really get into too much spoilers on that part. But yeah, I think this is basically that. Because this, um, these mountains in the background, this, I think it's Mount Nibble in, in Nibble Reclaim Reclaim his birthright and rule over the planet with Jenova at his side. Right, so what is Sephiroth's end game? That's something I want to talk about because <laughs> clearly this game is following something different than the original game. But they're still sticking to the major like parts and stuff. Like it's not like too fucking outlandish or whatever. But what is Sephiroth's end game? That now that that's something crazy. So uh, Sephiroth, right? The whole ending of like part one, how he was like seven seconds to the end. You know, like time enough for you. What does that mean, right? Like, there's so many theories. I, like, I could just go on for, like, days about like, what that is. You know, some people are saying, like, seven seconds for Aerith to die, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Right? But what is Sephiroth's MK? What does he want? Because it seems like Sephiroth, he knows. He's aware that something's going on with, with the timeline or whatever, right? Like, Sephiroth is woke, right? My boy's woke as fuck. He knows what's going on. So what is his goal exactly? Is he, like, is he trying to prevent, you know, himself from dying? Is he trying to, like... You know, like, like what, what's going on here, right? I, I don't know, but let's, let, let, let's go on. I saw you lying there. I figured it was too late. Wait, what are you implying? 
that I died? So this right here, right? This is a, clearly a conversation between Cloud and Aerith, it seems. I saw you uh, lying there. You know, I thought you died. And Aerith, you know, she says, hey, like, you know, do you think I'm an imposter? So this part stood out to me because, like, yo, like, that's crazy. What if this Aerith isn't, like, the real Aerith? I don't know, man. Like, it, I, I, I want to say she's the real Aerith. You know what I'm saying? But, like, because Cloud's clearly, right, you know he, he how he glitches out? He has those, like, fucking visions or whatever. F seizures, those moments, his tics, whatever the fuck you guys want to call him, bro. You, you know exactly what I mean, bro. When Cloud's, like, uh, like, you know, holding his head, like, seeing all his flashbacks and stuff, or whatever he's, he's doing. He saw her die. Like, in part one, he saw it happen. I don't know if, like, he's talking to her about, like, his vision, what he saw. Or like you know if he like or if he if does he does, has this all happened before and is he like getting like deja vu is he remembering or is he like witnessing what's happening in like the FF seven PS one timeline like simultaneously you know what I'm saying so that's crazy I think they're gonna get into that so yeah that's that's gonna be nutty that I'm some kind of imposter and how crazy would it be like how crazy would it be if Aerith really is an imposter or some shit like literally like how crazy would that be. That would be, like, I don't know, like, what if, uh, Sephiroth, what if Sephiroth doesn't want, like, Aerith to die? Like, what if that's, like, the crazy twist? Like, what if Sephiroth is trying to, like, save Aerith? Because Aerith, like, her dying is what caused, like, Holy to be made or whatever, like, the white materia and, like, you know, she gained, like, control of the live stream and all that. Like, what if Sephiroth doesn't want her to die? Like, what if it's gonna play out like that? What if she has to die? I have no idea what, what's in store for this game, but, so you see here, what is fact and what is fiction? This is basically, I, I want to say this is referring to, like, the two separate timelines. Because, like, remember, like, Nomura and, like, Square, they said that uh, the events of Final Fantasy VII on PS1 and the events of the remake, they're literally both canon. Like, simultaneous, like, canon. So everything that happened, like, before, as far as we know it, that's all canon. This stuff is going to be canon, too, apparently. Like, a double canon. It's a little weird, but it kind of reminds me of Dragon Ball Super. Like, how the manga and the anime are, like, they're both canon, but different. You know what I'm saying? So this is going to be pretty interesting. You were here with me five years ago. You see, this is Zack now in Cloud. Where are you? So Zack, is Zack like woke? Like is Zack, does he know what's going on? Because this is literally the, this looks like the scene. Now, I, I'm not too sure if this is, uh, I, I, I want to say this is the scene after like Zack is supposed to die. You know what I'm saying? And he, like, didn't die. It, it, it's a little weird here, because, uh, like, spoiler alert, right? In Crisis Core, the end of the game, Zack dies. He gets, like, fucking shot down, gunned down by, like, Sh Shinra soldiers. He saves Cloud. You know, Cloud's, like, I don't know, 16 years old. Yeah, he's, like, 16. Uh, he's, like, a little foot soldier, a grunt. So this scene right here, right? Uh, I want to say this is before Cloud, like, enters. It's, and, and, like, here's the thing, too, right? How does Cloud get Zack's sword if Zack technically, like, did not die? Like... You know what I'm saying? Or, like, did Zack, like, actually die, and then, like, this is all being, did this all, like, happen? Like, was Zack revived? Like, I, I, it's so confusing to try to explain this, because at, at the same time, I don't even know what's really going on, you know? All I can really do is assume. It's just assumptions at this point. But it looks like Zack is kind of woke. He's like, hey, like, he's kind of, like, recollecting things a little bit, right? He's like, you know, hey, like, you were here, like, what's happened to you? So, if you listen to this. What happened to you? I'm trying so hard to find you. So, so Aerith saying, I'm trying so hard to find you. I don't know if she's talking to Zack or if she's talking to, like, Cloud. I don't know what's going on here, but I think maybe Zack is woke. Aerith is woke. Several. I think the only one that's not fucking woke is Cloud, apparently. Well, go figure, right? He's the main character. He doesn't know what the fuck's going on, you know? Main character, it's, it's like a trope in these, like, RPGs. Like, not even just Final Fantasy, but every RPG where main character loses their memory, some shit. But I don't know. I think something really crazy is uh, about to go down here. Sorry. There's gonna be some crazy love like triangles. And there you have it. That is the reveal. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Now, that's crazy, because, like, the whole Rebirth, I thought it was gonna say Part 2, like, Final Fantasy VII Remake Part 2, but then I was like, yeah, that's gonna be a little too long of a title. It's gonna be stupid. Not really stupid, but, like, it's, like, uh, like, all right, Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two. like, really? I do like the whole, like, re the renaming scheme of it, right? Rebirth. Uh, they did confirm that Part 3, there's going to be three parts, apparently, right? So it's just like OG, right? Disc 1, Disc 2, Disc 3. Um, I see a lot of people, uh, right? I was looking at some of the comments, so like, under this, like, video, like, for the reveal. People were, like, wondering if this is going to be, like, rushed. 
because apparently they already started like part three like development so that's like a good sign actually so it looks like we might only get like three year gaps between each like part or whatever but um but but yeah people are like worried and you know saying oh is this game gonna be rushed or whatever i don't really think that's the case a lot of people are like forgetting uh the fact that disc three of the original game was literally like one level literally the north crater you go there you fight sephiroth in the end that's it like literally a whole third disc was just like the ending like final boss segment of the game and like some cutscenes. so realistically like a two disc game you know and you know there being three parts i think they might actually be able to legitimately fit all this into one game and it is weird right how they like ended the like first part right after like they left midgard because that technically is like the first i don't know like eight hours of the game maybe if that um i'm trying to remember it, it really barely uh covers anything in disc one where part one ended so you know like i said like part uh two or like rebirth you know that's gonna have the mass majority of the open world so maybe they had to end it there so like this is gonna be like, super like massive open world you know what i'm saying so i i kind of have like faith in this and like i don't know I, I think it's gonna work out right because they have like i feel like a rebirth or part two is probably gonna end right around the time like uh or right around the point where like meteor is like a thing and then part three is gonna take off probably from like meteor like the whole like threat you know or like just before that so yeah uh let me see what, what what's next they did say that, um, yeah, so that, that, that's crazy, right? Available next winter. So we're literally getting uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth next winter. So probably around Christmas time. Uh, honestly, I feel like a December release, maybe. Or, honestly, technically, that could even be 2024. If you really think about it, because, like, technically, next winter is still 20. Like, January is still technically next winter. You know what I'm saying? So... I, I want to like <laughs> I want to hope and say we're gonna get a 2023 release date maybe around like Christmas that would be awesome you know the game would fucking sell phenomenally if it did but if as you see here PS5 only like this is a, a straight up PS5 exclusive that means this game's gonna be optimized for PS5 you know it's probably gonna be 60 FPS 4K that's fucking awesome right so there's there's no limitations of like old hardware holding this back they're gonna they're going fucking in with this right that's crazy. I know a lot of people are, like, a little bit mad, like, salty or whatever. Like, hey, like, PS5 only is hard to get one, whatever. I know it's hard to get one, but, I mean, it's been a little easier lately. You know what I'm saying? And if you can't, you got a whole, like, I don't know, fucking, like, a whole, like, year and a half, you know, to get a PS5. So, which I don't think it's going to be too hard. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, man, next winter, you know, just be ready, right? This winter, we're getting the Crisis Core, like, reunion, so that's going to be fucking awesome, right? Uh, Definitely, if y'all want to see me play that, I'll be on that. I'll be on that shit all day. You know when it comes out that'll give me some time to prep for this game but you know uh that's all there is to it that's all like the breakdowns and stuff i have uh let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below make sure to hit that like button like i'm gonna talk to you right and subscribe to the channel you know will help your boy out uh, i'm gonna put like the links down to my social media and stuff in the comment section not the comment section gosh the description down below so yeah get at me on instagram facebook all that good stuff there as well if you guys, you know, like me and support me, you know, you guys know what to do. Share this video to your family, friends, share it to your enemies, your your crazy exes, whatever the, the fuck you got to share it to. But yeah, uh, this is your boy Joker signing out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.